In this video here, we're going to take a look at modeling with trigonometric functions. So trigonometry can be used to model real life situations such as the following here. So what do we have then? Well, for example, we could model the depth of water in a harbor, or we could model the height of a Ferris wheel. And then finally here, we could model the temperature in a room on a given day. So as always here, these three examples I've chosen, they are just randomly chosen and don't represent anything special, but they do give you a bit of an idea, a bit of a snapshot of so the type of things that we can model using trigonometric functions. Now, questions that involve modeling with trigonometric functions may require the use of the harmonic identities, which you may also know as the R formulae, and we did introduce those in the previous video. So just recall them, that a sine x plus or minus b cos x is equal to R sine of x plus or minus alpha, and that a cos x plus or minus b sine x is equal to r cos of x minus or plus alpha. Okay, so r here is strictly greater than zero, and alpha is between zero and 90 degrees, or zero and pi over two if we're working in radians. And then in that case here, r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, and r cos alpha is equal to a, and r sine alpha is equal to b. Okay. So that gives us everything that we need here then for our introduction to modeling with trigonometric functions. All we're gonna do here now is take a look at one practice question. So let's just take a look then at this one practice question here for modeling with trigonometric functions. So as we can see here, we do have quite a long question, right? And this is broken down into four individual parts. We've got part A, part B, part C, and then finally here, part D. So for this question here, what we're told then is the movement of a bird as it flies above ground is recorded. The height h meters above ground level is modeled by this given equation here, where t is the time measured in seconds from when the bird passes over a checkpoint. So for the first part of this question here, part a, it says express three cos t plus four sine t in this given form here of r cos of t minus alpha, where r is strictly greater than zero and alpha is between zero and nine degrees, giving the exact value of r and the value of alpha to one decimal place. So hopefully here part A is nice and straightforward. This is just based around the harmonic identities or the R formula, whichever you prefer to call it. So for part A then, what do we have here? Well, we've got this form here, right? R cos of t minus alpha. So using the compound angle formula here, so R cos, of t minus alpha here using the compound angle formula. What we get then is r cos t cos alpha. So r cos t cos alpha. And then we have plus r sine t sine alpha. Okay, like so. And what we're going to do here then is equate coefficients with this right hand side here and this as my left hand side. So what I've got then is three cos t plus four sine t is equal to r cos t cos alpha plus r sine t sine alpha. Okay, like so. And then by equating coefficients here, and let's do this in a different color we can see that three cos t and this r cos t cos alpha will match. So by equating coefficients, then what we can see here is that r cos alpha is equal to three. So r cos alpha is equal to three. And let's change our pen color here. Let's do it in blue. We can see then that the four sine t here matches with the second term then of r sine t sine alpha, okay? So in that case, then again, just equating coefficients here, we can see that r sine alpha is equal to four. So r sine alpha is equal to four, okay? And all we're gonna do here now is divide this equation, let's call this equation two, by equation one, okay? And if we do that here, what we get then, so I'm gonna get r sine alpha, we get r sine alpha over r cos alpha. And we know the value of both r sine alpha and r cos alpha. So r sine alpha is 4. 
our cos alpha is 3, so we get 4 over 3 there. And we know that our sine alpha over our cos alpha would simply be tan alpha here. In that case then, tan alpha is equal to 4 over 3. And in that case then, if we just simply want alpha here, we just take tan inverse or arc tan of both sides here. So in that case then, alpha is equal to, so tan inverse or arc tan, whichever you prefer of 4 over 3, put this into your calculator here, and if you do this correctly then, just to ensure that you give your answer to one decimal place here for alpha, what we get then is 53.1 degrees there. Okay, so that's the value of alpha, but we're not done here because we need to find the exact value of r. Um, a slight miswording in here, we don't need to find the exact value of r because it does work out as an integer anyway, um, but let's go and find the value of r here. So for r then, Again, nice and straightforward here. So r is equal to the square root. We get the square root here of, so it would be 3 squared plus 4 squared, right? So we get 3 squared plus 4 squared here, like so. So what I get then is the square root here. I get 9 plus 16. Hopefully you recognize straight away that this is one of our Pythagorean triples. We get the square root of 25 which is equal to 5 here, okay? So altogether then, what I've got here is 3 cos t plus 4 sine t. We've got 3 cos t plus 4 sine t, and that then is identical here to r cos of t minus alpha, so r is equal to 5. I get 5 cos of t minus alpha, where alpha is 53.1 degrees. So t minus 53.1 there, okay? And there we have it. So for questions like this, do ensure that you actually express it, you know, finally here at the very end in this form, right? As the question asks you to do. So express 3 cos t plus 4 sine t in this form, okay? So there we have it. That gives us the solution to part A. So what I'm gonna do here is just quickly pause the video, Clear the screen, and then we can have a go at part B, part C, and part B. So we've cleared the screen. Now let's have a go then at answering part B here. So for part B, then it says find the height above ground level when the bird passes over the checkpoint. So for part B, then we know that the bird passes over the checkpoint when t equals zero. So this is when t equals zero here. So in that case, then all we need to do here is substitute t equals zero into this original equation here. So in that case then for h here, we have that h equals, so I get 600 all over, I've got 18 plus 3 cos zero plus 4 sine zero. Okay, like so. So, Cos zero is one, sine zero is zero. So what I've got here then is 600 over 18 plus three lots of one. So 18 plus three gives me 21. And I could just give the answer as this, right? This is the exact height, but we could also give the decimal equivalent here. Eva's fine. We'd have 600 over 21 meters. Or if we give this as its decimal equivalent here, what I'd get then if we were in this to say three significant figures here, is 28.6 meters. So 28.6 meters there. Okay. And there we have it. So nice and straightforward. That gives us the solution to part B. So moving on to part C now. So for part C then, it says find the minimum height of the bird above ground level and state the value of t for which this occurs. So for part C here, if we just think about the equation here that gives us the height above ground level, what I can see then is basically, we need to maximize this denominator here, okay? And the easiest way to do that is to make use of the harmonic identity from part A. So just recall then, we had three cos t plus four sine t. And we established in part A then that this was identical to five cos, of t minus 53.1, okay? So what this means then is we can rewrite this fraction here 
So what we've got then for H is that H is equal to, I get 600 all over, I had 18 plus five cars of T minus 53.1. Okay, so five cars of T minus 53.1. Okay, like so. So to maximize this denominator here then, if we just think about this for a moment, the way to do that would be to consider the maximum here of the cosine function, which in this case would just be one, right? So the maximum here of cosine is one. The max here is equal to one. And this occurs then when the argument here of cosine is zero. Okay, so in that case, then we need the argument here of the cosine function to be zero. So in that case, that would just be when t is equal to 53.1. So the max is equal to one when t is equal to 53.1, like so. So in that case, then we get five lots of one here. So that's five. 18 plus five gives me 23. So in that case, then for h here, we get 600 over 23 and we could just give the answer like this right this is in its exact form or we could also give the decimal equivalent just like we did for part b so what we get then for the decimal equivalent here is 26.1 meters here okay so that's two three significant figures there and there we have it so that gives us the solution to part c and now we arrive at the very last part of this question here part d so what i'm just going to quickly do here again is just pause the video We'll quickly clear the screen just so we have enough room to answer part B here. So we've cleared the screen here then for the very last time. Let's have a go then at answering part D here. So for part D then, it says find the value of T when the bird is 30 meters above the ground here. So we obviously need to use this equation here, but to make life easier, what I'm going to do then is use the modified form using the harmonic identity that we established in part A. Now we did write that down for part C, but obviously I've cleared the screen here. If you've already got it to hand, that's great. But if not, I'll just write it down one more time here. So H is equal to, so we had 600 all over, so it was 18 plus, so we had five cars of T minus 53.1, okay like so. So for when the bird is 30 meters above the ground, in other words, when h is equal to 30. So in that case, then we get 600 all over 18 plus five cars of t minus 53.1, like so. And this is equal to 30, okay? So the easiest thing to do here then is to times both sides by this denominator here. So times both sides by 18 plus five cos of t minus 53.1. Then what I'm also gonna do in the same step here is divide through by 30. So in that case, then what I get is 18 plus five cos of t minus 53.1, like so. And this is equal then. So we had 600 divided by 30, and that would give us um, 20 there, right? So 600 divided by 30, and we get 20 there. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do here then is subtract 18 off both sides. So I get five cars. We get five cars of t minus 53.1. And this is equal then to 20 minus 18, giving us two. We're now going to divide both sides by 5 here. In that case, then, cos of t minus 53.1 is equal to 2 over 5, like so. And we're nearly here now. So if we want the value of t, then, and I need to take um, cos inverse of both sides here, what I'm also going to do is add 53.1 to both sides, right? So in that case, then, we get t minus 53.1 
is equal to cos inverse of 2 over 5, like so. And then add 53.1 to both sides. And this would give us the value of t for when the bird is 30 meters above the ground here. So in that case, then just do this on your calculator, obviously. t is equal to, if I run this to say one decimal place here or three significant figures, I get 119.5 there. Okay. Obviously, that's in seconds. So 119.5 seconds there okay and there we have it so that gives us the solution there to the very last part of this question part d and that gives us the solution to the question overall and that brings us to the end then of this video here on modeling with trigonometric functions